Hey guys, welcome back to another All Things Nerd podcast. My name is Nathan, and let's talk about Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls 2 is a sequel to Dark Souls 1. Yes, it is titled Dark Souls 2, but it has nothing to do with Dark Souls 1 or 3. It is its own separate game. The game is set in a fantasy world called Dren- Drenlaic, and... Um, it's just its own title. Now, I have been currently still playing through Dark Souls 2. I did currently a video on Dark Souls Remastered. So if you haven't seen that, please go check that out. Um, I gave my opinions and thoughts of playing through the game. Right now, not like Dark Souls Remastered, I'm currently still playing through Dark Souls 2. So it's still a you know learning process. It's not my favorite in the Dark Souls series. I am having fun with it, but I like Dark Souls 1 and 3 a lot better. Uh, Dark Souls 2 has a way bigger learning curve than Dark Souls 1 and 3. And the reason I say that is because, well, I feel as if the combat is a lot different, uh, especially, and I feel like it's a lot slower than 1 and 3. Maybe, I mean, maybe it's not super slower, but like it just feels more like janky like it wasn't made as well as the first game and the third and there's actually a reasoning a reasoning behind that right so when from software we're making a sequel to dark souls one um, um miyazaki was actually busy um making bloodborne so he basically said hey the b team studio from software make the sequel do what you want to do and you know I'm not gonna be holding your hand I mean I'll help you through things but you guys you know this is your own project so they didn't have from software a team on it they only had the B team so that's why you see Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 3 developed and made a lot better and that's why a lot of people like Dark Souls 1 and 3 now there were also a lot of development issues with Dark Souls 2 um, you know if you notice a lot of the areas especially the bosses in the game one thing I've noticed is they can be kited really easily so you can literally just circle strafe them right you can just walk in circles um, you don't have to really fight them you can just do circles around them do damage you know kind of like uh, kind of like a zombie um, in Call of Duty right the zombies train right you would train zombies It's kind of the same thing here you know you can do a circle hit them do another circle hit them and then you can just repeat that now Dark Souls 2 is a lot more challenging in the sense of I feel like especially now I haven't played the original Dark Souls 2 you can see here that I'm actually showing gameplay for Scholar of the First Sin edition now uh, if you haven't I definitely recommend Scholar over the first edition just because uh, the game looks way better like it looks a lot more gorgeous right and also not only that but um, they've changed a lot of stuff compared to the uh, original right so enemies are in different places uh, they have changed uh, they've definitely spawned a lot more enemies in places uh, so there's just been a lot of different stuff you can see here I'm sucking really bad at this game I keep getting poisoned <laughs> so that's been one of the hard challenges one thing I will say about the poison in this game I like it so much more better than the first game because I feel like poison in the first game you get poisoned and then it you can't get rid of it right unless you eat the moss here it's like sure you get poison and yeah you can still eat the moss but uh, you can just see you can just let the timer run out and poison will go away quicker uh, this was actually my first time um, versing a mimic in this game so that was interesting and the mimics in this game are like the mimic in Dark Souls 3 where they kind of you know go on their back instead of just fighting you if I remember correctly in Dark Souls 1 I don't remember there ever being mimics where they turn around on their back and fight you upside down um, unless I'm just, I'm just not remembering correctly maybe someone can correct me that on the video but uh, some of my so some of my thoughts on Dark Souls 2 um, like I said earlier, it's not my favorite in the franchise. Uh, I'm, I am having fun with it, and it has been a big learning curve for me. But one thing I do like, of course, like everybody else, I do love Majula. Majula is beautiful. Uh, it's, that's a really cool hub area compared to the Firelink Shrine and the other Firelink Shrine Dark Souls 3. 
Now, the Fire Link Shrine in Dark Souls 1 is my favorite. I think, like, I can speak for most people like that. Here's me being an idiot trying to open this Pharos Lockstone. Um, <laughs> and I'm getting poisoned again, so I don't even know what I'm doing here. But I didn't realize that you could destroy the poison and get rid of it, spoilers, uh, by going and lighting the uh, turn, the, the, what do you call the giant uh, wind, wind terminal or whatever you call those things. Um, you can go light it on fire and that will actually stop all the poison coming in the earthen peak area. So, um, man, one of my least favorite places in this game have been the gutter where you go down and fight the, um, uh, what's that boss? I can't think of his name, but he's terrible. The run back is the worst. Uh, I, uh, but people were telling me that the run back to that boss is nothing compared to what I'm going to deal with in the DLC. I heard the DLC was like super hard in this game um, because people say they're just like, like I guess undead like reindeer that like charge you in the snow and you can't see where they're coming from. So I, um, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. You know, that should be fun. Uh, what else can I say about Dark Souls 2? Dark Souls 2, the, the enemy types are a lot different in this game in a sense of um, I feel like they can... They can kill you easier than Dark Souls 1 and 3. I don't know. I just I felt like you, it just takes a couple shots and you're like dead. But that's also because you get overwhelmed quickly. I will say advice. Um, if you're going to get into Dark Souls 2, definitely don't go in with different expectations than 1 and 3. Just because, like I mentioned, the combat's a little more clunkier in this game. So the way you move your character and stuff, you can kind of see here. Watch, I'm about to fight these guards. It's just, I don't know, the combat is just different. So it's not like your typical, oh, I'm about to die. Okay, I get away. Also here, you'll notice here in a minute, I actually go in the boss room. And I didn't realize that uh, you could get rid of the poison right away yet. So I actually go in the boss room and you'll see here in a minute what happens. One thing I also noticed too about the Scholar Edition, people are saying that you get overwhelmed and that's super true. Like uh, you'll go into a room and you'll have, instead of have like three enemies spawn, you'll have like 10 of them and they just overwhelm you quick. It, you gotta really take this game a lot slower than one and three and just for that reason alone. So here we go, I'm about to fight the boss. This is Mytha the Baneful Queen. Now I already beat her. But this is uh, past gameplay, and I didn't realize that you could drain the poison. But I'm going in this room, and I'm thinking, how is this fair? Like, <laughs> how am I supposed to defeat this boss? And then I realized it. Um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to give my quick thoughts on Dark Souls 2. Um, you know, what's your guys' thoughts on Dark Souls 2? Let me know. If you guys enjoy the game, if you don't, if you're like, uh, you know, it's not my favorite in the series, let me know what you guys think in the uh, comments below. Uh, let me know if there's any tips you can give me while going through the game. Um, but yeah, I uh, hope to see you guys on the uh, next video. All right, take care, guys. And I apologize, by the way, my, I'm losing my voice, so um, my voice might sound kind of weird <laughs> speaking into the microphone. But yeah, guys, I uh, hope to catch you on the next video. Take care.